This is Five on Your Side at Five, focused on you. Tonight, we're hearing from students and the Jewish community following protests at Washington University. Pro-Palestinian protesters have been gathering at campuses across the country, leading to hundreds of arrests. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Kelly Jackson. And I'm Mike Bush. Today, there was a news conference at Washington University where nearly 100 were arrested during weekend protests. We have team coverage tonight. Megan Kernan has reaction from Jewish students on campus. But first, let's start with political editor Mark Maxwell. He's live at the university. Mark. Mike and Kelly, these campus protests have tested university officials nationwide, drawing a wide range of reactions from them, some opting for that softer touch, others the hard crackdown. But in every instance, protesters are shining their spotlight of scrutiny on authority uh, as they try to build their movement. Some of the faculty members who now face discipline for their involvement in Saturday's demonstrations are criticizing the use of police force to arrest protesters. Those faculty now barred from campus and barred from making any in-person contact with students until the end of semester. They protested policies they perceived as anti-free speech, but just as free as they are to speak, the private school is free to associate with them or not. Another example of that occurred in the fall when WashU professor Seth Crosby claimed he'd been fired after tweeting in support of Israel's bombing in Gaza. He wrote online that Israel wasn't targeting, quote, humans, while his contact information was scrubbed from the university website and his Twitter account no longer exists, the university tells us today he's still employed. Seth Crosby's uh, speech was genocidal in nature, um, so I think there is a distinction that we have to make there. The claim of safety is being used by universities all over the country, uh, even as they call in very violent react police reaction, uh, uh, at Columbia actually armed reaction. Um, so the claim of safety is completely spurious. Uh, we have many anti-Zionist Zew Jewish students in the movement who have been physically assaulted uh, by the police. Uh, so their safety apparently is different from the safety of other Jewish students. Wash U would not comment on any other disciplinary actions Crosby might have faced. Another faculty member facing discipline is Board of Aldermen President Megan Green, a big figure in the city of St. Louis. She teaches at Wash U on occasion how to build political movements with protests. She and other faculty members said the police force may actually backfire and help them build their cause. Live outside Wash U, Mark Maxwell, five on your side. The Jewish community at Washington University is also reacting to the recent events on campus. Megan Kernan here in studio with the support that's being offered to Jewish students. Megan. Kelly and Mike, there are several options to find help and safe spaces available for Jewish students on campus. The Jewish community at WashU has really come together to support one another. With the recent protests, many Jewish students we spoke with are finding support at Chabad and Hillel, two of the biggest Jewish organizations near campus. Both organizations have security outside their buildings during events. One student, Miriam Yankovich, says she appreciates WashU's responses to the protests and that they've heightened campus security. Yankovich says she feels like there is always someone around to provide safety for her, but it's been a difficult time for her and her community. It's been really hard for a lot of different people, you know, um, and I don't think you know, violence of any kind is ever okay. I think if there wasn't that security there, um, you know, standing outside the Chabad house, I don't know if I would feel safe, just given the climate of everything that's going on, but because they have put in such an effort to have security at like any event that they have, that has definitely made me feel safe. When it comes to the re to reaction to the protests and the school's response, a staff member at Hillel says some students appreciate the heightened security on campus, while others don't appreciate it. Hillel says they've been providing extra support to students since the protests and continue to use all the resources for whatever they need. Columbia University in New York is where these protests started just over a week ago. Overnight, those protests escalated. Demonstrators smashed windows and barricaded the doors of a building. That came hours after the university started suspending students who refused to leave an encampment. The school says it will expel any students involved in the overnight protests. And you can read more about the protests on KSDK.com. For a link, text the word PROTESTS to 314-425-5355. The family of the victim in the deadly Whippet crash have agreed to a multi-million dollar settlement with two companies. Marissa Polite died in 2020 when a driver crashed into the urgent care in Baldwin where she worked. That driver, Trenton Geiger, says he passed out after inhaling Whippet, a container with nitrous oxide meant to make whipped cream. 
He's now behind bars. Polite's family will get $5 million from United Brands. They make the product. They will also get a confidential amount from Coughing Cardinal, the smoke shop where Geiger bought it. Late this afternoon, defense attorneys rested their case in the Thomas Kenworthy trial. Kenworthy is accused of murdering St. Louis police officer Tamaris Bohannon in 2020. Five on your side's Christine Byers is live outside the courthouse in downtown St. Louis to take us through key testimony from Kenworthy's ex-wife, Christine. Amy Kenworthy was married to Thomas Kenworthy for about 15 years. And during that time, she says he was physically abusive to her and they share two children. Despite all of that, she took the stand today in his defense and agreed with prosecutors when they called her his ride or die love. Defense attorneys are trying to persuade jurors that Thomas Kenworthy should be found not guilty by reason of mental defect for the killing of officer Tamaris Bohannon in August of 2020. Today, Kenworthy's ex-wife said she was the victim of domestic abuse by Kenworthy and also admitted she disobeyed a protective order she filed against him by letting him see her and his children. As Amy Kenworthy sat on the stand, prosecutors played audio from a call she had with a detective in Florida following an unrelated crime there months before the shooting. This man is the only word that I can describe without being dramatic is the devil. This man does not care. He does not care about life. He does not care about prison. He doesn't care. He doesn't he doesn't care. Now, after Amy left the stand, Thomas Kenworthy then waived his right to testify on his own behalf, and the defense rested their case. The state started putting their rebuttal witnesses on the stand about an hour before court adjourned. Live outside the courthouse in downtown St. Louis, Christine Byers, five on your side. Just hours ago, the Urban League unveiled an exciting project at its headquarters in North St. Louis City. The agency held a ribbon cutting for the George Washington Carver Urban Farming Project. The new facility with a greenhouse and hydroponic containers will provide fresh produce. The goal is to put a dent in food deserts and provide education and accessibility. Vested urban farms will operate inside the greenhouse, which will have 300 flower gardens. If the Urban League chooses to do a farming market across the street, then we'll participate. Then we will help people purchase their own towers. This is the first and only Urban League in the country to have a greenhouse and hydroponic farming at its headquarters. Coming up, a shooting leaves multiple officers dead in North Carolina. What we're learning about the victims and the suspect. New recommendations for breast cancer screenings. What cancer experts have to say about them. Keeping track of your credit. Consumer Reports shares its advice if you find a mistake on your report. And it's a breezy south-southeast wind right now, 83 degrees. Now look at all the severe thunderstorm watches, tornado watches to the west of us. Is any of that headed our way? I'll let you know coming up.